Hello. We usually record on Fridays. Sometimes Saturdays get certain people in. But in September 6th, first Sunday in September, we're going to record on Sunday morning at 10 o'clock. And we invite you to the recording. We're taking baby steps to get back into our building. And we have prepared. If you don't have a mask, we have a mask for you to wear. We'd like you to wear your mask. And we'll have these so you can wash your hands. And when you come, if you want to take communion, we have these cups of grape juice and wafer and a communion meditation for you to have communion at home. And we know that giving is an act of worship, so if you want to give an offering, you put it in the offering plate, put the lid on it. So no handshaking, no hugging, no kissing. Try not to sit too close to each other. And you're welcome to come to the recording. Sunday, 10 o'clock, September 6th, the first Sunday in September, as we slowly come back into our building. Hope to see you there. What are you afraid of? Do you have a fear? What do you call the fear of snakes? I call that common sense. I've always had a fear of speed bumps, but I'm slowly getting over it. I had a fear of fences. I just couldn't get over it. People have all kinds of fears. There's fear of open spaces, fear of heights, fear of flying, fear of enclosed spaces. Some people are afraid to get in an elevator with other people. Fear of insects, fear of snakes, if I see a snake on the TV in the daytime, I have nightmares at night. Fear of dogs, fear of storms, fear of needles, fear of public speaking. What do you fear? It was a stormy night, and the disciples found themselves in a terrible storm, and their little ball being tossed about by the winds and the waves. Water began filling the ship and it looked as if they were on the verge of sinking and drowning. Fear and panic filled the hearts of the disciples. When they approached the Lord, his question to them was, why are you so fearful? That's Mark 4 verse 40. Hundreds of years earlier, the psalmist had asked himself a similar question. Whom shall I fear? And of whom? Shall I be afraid? Are you afraid today? Are you full of fear? Today we're learning from God's word how to live without fear. Wouldn't you like to know that? I'm going to mention some scriptures. I'd like you to write them down so the next time you're afraid, you can look at these scriptures. First one is Isaiah 43, verse 1. Write that down. Isaiah 43, verse 1, it reads like this. Don't fear, for I have redeemed you. I've called you by name. You're mine. God actually commands us not to fear. The phrase fear not is used 80 times in the Bible, most likely because he knows the enemy, Satan, uses fear to decrease our hope, destroy our victories. Get us discouraged and depressed, makes us withdraw. Psalm 23, verse 4, you probably have this one memorized. Psalm 23, verse 4, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Write this down. Psalm 27, verse 1, it reads, Lord is my light and my salvation, whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Fear is a dark shadow that envelops us, ultimately imprisons us within ourselves. Everyone has been a prisoner of fear at one time or another. Fear of rejection, fear of misunderstanding, uncertainty, sickness, even death. Some fear getting older. But we can conquer fear by trusting in the Lord who brings salvation. 
If you want to dispel the darkness of fear, let us remember with the psalm writer that the Lord is my light and my salvation. Now write this scripture down. Psalm 46, verse 1 and 2. Psalm 46, verse 1 and 2. God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give away and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea. The fear of mountains and cities suddenly crumbling into the sea as a result of an earthquake or a nuclear blast haunts many people. But the psalmist writer says that even if the world were to end, we need not fear. In the face of total destruction, the writer expresses a quiet confidence in God's ability to save us. It seems impossible to consider the end of the world without becoming consumed by fear. But the Bible is clear. God is our refuge, even in the face of total destruction. He's not merely a temporary retreat. He's our eternal place of safety and can provide strength in any circumstances. So write this down now. Psalm 56, verse 4, it reads, When I'm afraid, I will trust in you. In God whose word I praise, in God I trust. I will not be afraid. David stated, What can mortals do to us? How much harm can people do to us? They can inflict pain and suffering and death, but no person can rob us of our souls or the future beyond this life. How much harm can we do to ourselves? The worst thing we can do is to reject God and lose a future with him in eternity. Jesus said, do not be afraid of those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Instead, we should fear God who controls this life and the next. Write this down, Psalm 112, verse seven and eight. Psalm 112, verse 7 and 8, it reads, They will have no fear of bad news. Their hearts are steadfast. Trusting in the Lord, their hearts are secure. They will have no fear. In the end, they will look in triumph on their foes. We all want to live without fear. Our heroes are fearless people who take on all dangers and overcome them. The psalmist writer teaches that fear of God can lead to fearless life. To fear God means to revere him as the almighty Lord. When we trust God completely to take care of us, we find that our fears, even death itself, will subside. So write this down, Philippians 4, verses 6 and 7. That's Philippians 4, verses 6 and 7. It reads like this. Do not be anxious about anything. But in everything by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. That's Philippians 4, verses 6 and 7. Followers of Jesus Christ are commanded not to be anxious about anything. Anything. That includes the coronavirus, the upcoming election, the social unrest in the streets, the financial pressures, family issues threatening our well-being. We are commanded to trust that our Heavenly Father will bring about what is best in the end and not to be anxious about it. Admittedly, that's easier said than done. If you are a worrier by nature, like I am a worrier, I'd like to challenge you to do something dramatically different this next week. This challenge is based on the two scriptures that follow the command in Philippians, not to be anxious about anything. Here's the challenge. During this coming week, read one minute of scripture for every minute you spend watching television news. If you spend one hour watching news at night, spend one hour with the television off reading the Bible. The simple practice will go a long way toward calming your nerves bringing you a peace that surpasses understanding. Many of us catch a bad case of highly anxiety from watching news hours on hours. We get addicted to it, but it's negative, it's contagious. It's no secret that news commentators increase ratings by fear-mongering, by saying things that scare you 
That's good for ratings. Seven died today of the virus. But they don't tell you that six of them were over 90 years old and hospital care is taking care of them because they're also dying of cancer. Oh, you hear COVID is spiking in Florida and we are warned it could happen in California too. What can I do about this except worry? Last week I was watching TV weatherman who interjected. Did you know all part of California is in danger? Really tried to scare us. Then he said, it's going to be 91 degrees tomorrow, but the humility is so high, it's going to feel like 96, so use caution. The National Hurricane Service predicts 2020 will be the worst year ever for tropical storms. Oh my. You ingest enough of that negativity, and you come away anxious, wringing your hands, tossing and turning all night. Afraid to go out of the house. Afraid to go to church. Afraid to hug your grandchildren. Afraid to shake hands. Afraid to take a walk with the dog without wearing a mask or goggles. Afraid to kiss your mate goodnight. Goodnight. Let me say up front, I believe the coronavirus is a real thing. It's dangerous and it's contagious. Although I think it's been overstated and exploited for political purposes, we are wise and compassionate to take reasonable precautions. And I admit I'm deeply concerned about our country and the potential riots that further damage our country. These are troubling times. However, it's not God's will for us to be so anxious that we wrap ourselves in bubble wrap and cow in fear in the closet. The Bible says Christ came to free those all their lives are held in bondage by their fear of death. Let me read that again to you. That's Hebrews 2, verse 15. The Bible says Christ came to free those who all their lives are held in bondage by their fear of death. That's Hebrews 2, verse 15. Christians are not supposed to be terrified of dying. The Apostle Paul said, for me to live is Christ, for me to die, that's even better. Christians don't have a death wish, but we do have an exit strategy that helps eliminate the fear. In fact, Christians are not supposed to be anxious about anything because we trust our Heavenly Father to take care of everything. So if you're ground down with anxiety, make a vow that for every minute you spend watching the negative TV news, you'll spend one minute reading the scripture because the scripture is true. It's noble, it's right, it's pure, it's excellent, it's eternal, it's praiseworthy. The scripture reprograms your mind. You'll discover the truth of Romans 10 verse 17 that you probably already know. It reads, Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. King David in the Old Testament faced all kinds of anxious moments in his life. As a shepherd boy, he fought off a lion and a bear. As a teenager, he went toe-in-toe -to -toe with a giant. As a young man, he hid in caves from King Saul's relentless soldiers who were trying to kill him. As a military general, David marched into combat against enemies. As a father, his own son Absalom rebelled against him. No wonder many of the Psalms contain encouraging words about overcoming fear. We have a plaque in our house that I made. I have showed it before on this program. And it reads, fear not tomorrow. God is already there. Fear not tomorrow, God is already there. Let's pray. Father God, we want to thank you for another day. Thank you for touching our lives in ways we cannot explain. You have taken us to realms of glory. We want to say thank you. As we depart to our various destinations, 
We ask you to continue to be with us. Let your spirit see through us. In Jesus' name we believe and pray. Amen, amen, amen. Amen.